good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to our special council meeting for October 25th, 2022, 6 p.m. here at the New Carolina Fire Station. Good evening, administrators and council. Um, who is our call? Mr. Bridge, your fellow. Just a minute. Mr. Bridge, you call roll, please. Councilwoman Eggleston? Here. Councilman Lindsay? Here. Councilman Robob? Here. Mayor Lowry? Here. Vice Mayor Grimm? Here. Uh, Councilman Baum? Here. Councilman Cook? Here. <coughs> All present. Right, thank you, sir. Tonight's invocation will be done by Councilman Cook. Our Heavenly Father, please guide us tonight as we attempt to do the business for the great citizens of this great city. Please protect all of our first responders, our fire, E EMTs, paramedics, our deputies, and all of those who are across our seas providing the protection that we need. Please pray that we will do the right things for this community. Thank you. Amen. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> all right. No action on minutes, communications none, city manager report none, comments from members of the public none, and um, resolutions and ordinances none, other business to discuss the 2023 budget. I'll we'll hand over to Mr. Bridge or Ms. Harris. Well, thank you, uh, Mayor Lowry, members of council. So we have been working on the budget now for quite a few weeks. Um, we've drafted it a few times. Uh, we come down with some numbers. Uh, some of these still could change after tonight, whatever you guys had recommend. Um, definitely open for discussion. So we are scheduled to have this meeting tonight. If we need to have a second meeting, that one's scheduled for November 3rd. I can also make the suggestion if we don't get to it tonight, maybe we finish it at the beginning of the next meeting on November 7th, opposed to having another special meeting. That's for you guys to decide, depending on how much we get through tonight. Um, but it is a finance budget, so we will turn it over to our finance director, Ms. Harris, who year in and year out does a great job with our budget development. Thank you, Mr. Bridge. You're Council very members, staff. So um, I'm going to go, I'm not going to detail every department and then. I'll just get to a point. If you have questions, just stop me. That way we're not here really long. So we're going to start with the general fund, and the first account in the, is the council. The council budget, I'm just going to the total, is $66,462. you have any questions, speak up. City manager. Excuse me. What yes. was that total again? For the expenses, 66462 I'm right here on the sheet. We're starting with expenses. Expenses for the council's budget. Oh, okay. And I'll I'll be up oh. on the screen with my little mouse um, so you can. <coughs> so does that work if I go to the totals per department? Mm -hmm. Mr. Lindsay, are you? On the I screen? found it. I okay. found it. Okay. Yeah, I was, I was at the top of it. And yeah. The revenues in the middle somewhere. No, it's just not expenses because revenues. Re you guys don't approve the revenues. So you guys approve at the pro at the expenditure level. So your ordinance comes to you with the expenditures. Okay. So the revenues, a lot of those are already set by the auditor when we do our estimated resources. When I say this is step one of the budget, they'll go to say this is how much you're going to have for anything, especially tax related. Some of those other things down there, like your public nuisance abatement, that's just based off our history. But a lot, but council is just responsible for approving the expenses, expenses, which is why we start here every year. Okay. A lot of the format when we do the budget, we template from the current year and we bring it over and then we adjust for anything additional or reduce um, if we see things that we're not going to be spending. So they're usually very close. So we're going to scroll down now to the city manager's budget. He has his wages, contractual materials. His total is 204786 for 2023. Going down to finance, we've got the same thing, <coughs> wages, transportation. We go down to contractual. 
capital and its total is 640,414. And finance for the wages, who all does that cover? So in the wages for the finance, we go over here to my wage screen and it includes my salary, the uh, finance payroll tax administrator salary, finance clerk, which is currently a, um, Victoria that does accounts payable, and the central cashier. So I have four. Okay. You guys did get that tab at the bottom of your Excel sheet. Did I attach that one? It says the wages. I gave that to you guys who can see how that's broken down because it oh, okay. can be a complex yep. map sometimes, for sure. Yeah. And that's what this page is that I'm showing up on the screen is the, the tab for wages for all the departments. So you can see a, a breakdown. Okay. So the finance department's total is 640,414. And the increase over this year's is coming mainly from where in there? So most of the increase, if we go up to this line that I've got highlighted on the screen, maintenance of equipment, we moved up from a, about a 15,000 in the last two years to 75. And what it's doing, my little note over here, is it's adding, um, we used to do a couple years ago in capital, maintenance of equipment was always in our capital expenditures. And that will go down to each department has a capital outlay. But we pulled those out and our capital now is based on a $5,000 purchase, something tangible. So the maintenance <coughs> is operating. So that is included. Um, the other item is we added the cloud. We're increasing the, um, we're taking the old server off for our software and putting it on the cloud and there's an expense on that. Mm -hmm. Let me see what else is standing out. Is that the VIP upgrade? Mm -hmm. The VIP. Okay. Mm -hmm. yep. Yes. The other is um, you're going to see in the detail the medical insurance. We don't have our confirmation on what our increase is going to be, and we think we've got a pretty good increase, probably 12 percent. I budgeted 10, so that's going to be a, a, a bigger item in everybody. And that's something that will change because their first swipe they gave back a week or two ago was an uh, increase of 24%. So when they come back that high, we don't take it back out the market. So what they come up with is we won't know that for a minute, um, but that would definitely have an impact on your wage line items and ultimately your income balance. So the, so the wage total for two, 2023 in the mm -hmm. finance department is 402 and it was 357 this year, 282 the last year. And a lot of it is I've increased my staff. They were split out between water and sewer, my cashier, and then the health insurance is the two main. Any other questions for finance? And Councilman Bond, you'll see, this is your first budget work session. She'll see how, how Colleen does the budget. She'll um, over, overestimate the expenditures and underestimate the, uh, am I saying that correctly? Mm -hmm. underestimated resources so you have a little bit of wiggle room in there so that 640 at the end of the year will probably not be that 640. so if you look at the 21 actual and what we actually budgeted for in 2020 what it actually turned out to be are two two different things sure okay thank you yes mm -hmm. our revenues um and our expenses can't we we obviously can't approve a budget that the revenue is not enough unless we're using fund balance and we do use fund balance because we're not at the end of the year and we don't have our exact totals but this is, consider this a not to exceed budget on these dollar figures. Okay. Planning department, wages um, $200,519. That is um, replacing what was a part-time employee to now a full-time and a helper. So their wages have increased. And that, I'll just jump over there since that's a different we have a full-time planning director in the budget when that person gets hired and then we have a seasonal worker and a part-time code enforcer and that's all under planning mm -hmm. the code enforcement is there okay yes so the planning department's total expenses <laughs> for 2023 are estimated at three hundred three thousand two hundred sixty nine dollars and before we go any further we'll see Especially at the fund balances for the general fund, how how it's it's, it's getting a little bit 
I don't want to say slim or anybody means we'll see how it closes at the end of the year. But when we look at these expenses, especially this year, we added a full-time <laughs> position. And then two, and what's different in years past that we haven't had dealt with is a full-time planning department. So it wasn't until 2021 that we had a full-time planner separate from me. Prior to that, the yearly expenses of that planning department were eight, under $80,000. You know, but now we're actually beefing it up. You're going to see those expenses actually rise up because of the additional people we have in there, which is very much needed. Um, so we'll have to watch that as it goes on down the budget to see how the fund balances work out. The uh, capital outlay for the planning department, is that for like computer updates or what, for the 20000 it is for citywide enhancements, kind of a general citywide enhancement. So there wasn't anything specific to okay. uh, list, but they put we put twenty thousand in there. If there is something large that would be an enhancement to the city, we're talking like flower baskets downtown, etc. Like okay. that. Even even um, I mean anything that can enhance the city. It's a pretty broad definition to be honest with you, um, but it was kind of intentional. Any other planning department questions? Law director, <coughs> we duplicated what we had this year, 70,000. Um, that's always a best estimate. We don't know what we're going to run into during the year, but we're, we're way under this year, so. And I would like to keep that at 70 because we will be hiring consultants for this growth of the city that will also pay out of that line item because he's going to be an attorney out of Columbus. <clears throat> Will that be enough then for hiring consultants out of Columbus? Yeah, I think, yeah. I think Along with mm -hmm. uh, the lawyer, city lawyer's mm -hmm. expenses? Yeah, Jake, Jake uh, yeah, he, yeah, absolutely. Okay. We need to visit, revisit that uh, mid-year. We can always reappropriate. I know some of the don't like to do, but we bound to have to do it at some point time in the year. But I'm confident with that, yes. Okay. Okay, moving on to the Parks Department. So let me, let me detail those wages. On the Parks Department, we have part of how he gets um, expensed in the parks, and you'll see he'll get expensed in water and sewer and fire and ambulance uh, for managing. Then we have a new position that we um, wanted to hire a full-time person in the parks to help with the, the mowing and the other items. So that brings, when you put somebody with the benefits, that's the dollar, this 103000 that comes over down here. So wages are um, definitely higher this year if we have the full-time employee added to the parks department. Which we do want to keep. That's in the wish list. The rest of their accounts, um, expenditures, brings the Parks Department total expenses estimated at $232,734. Um, before we get out of this thing, um, the Parks and Rec Board came to me, wanted up, uh, some money to, to buy benches and stuff like that before it was taken out of their special events budget. So we added 4500 in there. Uh, that's highlighted in yellow. It was up for council discussion. Um, ultimately, that would be your guys' call. Um, we do also have $6,000 in for their special events that they can put on next year as well. Did they say where? I mean, these benches are going to go? We already ordered five of them for this year. Um, that won't come from this? No, we're taking out of the planning, de planning department development. Right. So planning development. It's separate from what they're wanting to do. Yeah, this is next year. So next year they wanted to buy something for the parks. They could have their own budget to do so. Where's the benches we bought going to go? You have to ask Park and Rec Board that. Okay. you know where they're going to place them? I think a couple are, though, by the playground mm -hmm. set in that, Smith. That one, people mm -hmm. always want one knows. There are various places where you can watch your children play, and I okay. think that was the biggest key. Are, are, they, are they the metal ones, or are they the... They're the recyclable plastic. They're all going to match now. Mm -hmm. Anything we do will all match the ones that, like at the shelter house. What type of signs are they looking at? It was just an example. So you guys, mm -hmm. I'm not saying they are going to get signed, but it was just an example of it be a purchase that they wanted to get. Mm -hmm. So it's not really an event. What you go, buy a, you go out and buy a bench, it's not really, it goes under special events. Does that make sense? Yeah. 
Last year they did what? They uh, and I'm not saying this in a condescending way. Yeah. They did the Easter egg hunt. What else did they do? Um, uh, do you remember? That was all I remember. I know they did the Easter egg hunt. Um, <coughs> I know they want to be part of the fireworks. Okay. They didn't. They didn't help out with oh. fireworks this past year. Right. Okay. Yep. Um, and I don't know if they're looking to expand. I know, like I said, that board don't report to us. So. Right. I mean, wanting to uh, bring back the uh, foam frenzy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's a big deal. Bring back the foam frenzy, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <coughs> when the park department, I mean, the parks out of uh, Springfield put that on, it was a probably a lot of kids. It was yeah. packed. It was packed. So we, we did it here one year, I thought, over at Smith Park. It was, yeah. but it was put on by National right. Trail. Yeah. 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 So yeah. I'm, I'm okay with having that in our fire department. Yeah, we were, we we played the rinse off stuff. So. Yeah, <laughs> they ran in foam, then we rinsed them off with you. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I was just going to ask, Colin. You have an issue with this? No. I'm out. I'm fine with it. Okay. I think anything we can do to uh, provide service as well as service. Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, can we add a one in front of that though? Because I could really use some money at the ballpark. <laughs> Well, you gotta look at your lease because uh, commercial lease, man, you guys are supposed to do all the maintenance on that. That's it. All right, I'll, I'll give up my lease. Now it needs mowed. <laughs> it does actually. <laughs> no, it doesn't. It does not. I was just there. Oh, oh did it just get mowed? Did it, did it not need mowed. That Last grass, week that, it did. That grass, that grass hasn't grown in two weeks. <laughs> all right, very Your lease is gonna be renewed. Back to you, Miss Harris. Does anybody else have any issues or So, if it's a lease, can I go ahead and use the weed and feed on it? Mm hmm. Is it in the lease that says you can't? There's, there's a number of government agencies. Yeah, actually, I think it is. There is something in there about that, at least. It's on the party down there. Sunshine tree. Mm -hmm. All right. Anybody else on that have an issue? All right, back to you, Ms. Harris. Okay. Thank you. Special events um, under the general fund. Now, this is what we were talking about. The parks and rec have a um, line item of 6000 Your fireworks, we bumped up to 22000 And we kept the same for the employee um, appreciation holiday. We um, we only spent two thousand half of it last year for the um, assistance with the Christmas party. So if there's anything, this is kind of your dollar amount budget, council. I know fireworks want to be expanded a little bit at the show. Um, I don't know how much two thousand extra is going to get you, but right. we put in some twenty. You well, know. and if, if they have extra two thousand from the appreciation holiday. So it's sitting there in the line item now, in the budget or in the book somewhere. So we, not? the end of 2021, we spent up here. I'll, I'll highlight. We spent the 1900. Um, we budgeted for 4,000 this year. We haven't had our Christmas party yet, so I don't have the. We haven't. Oh, okay, spent you stopped in the last year. You only spent 2,000. Yes, 2021 at the Christmas party, and I think we had a barbecue. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it came into 1,900 this year. We haven't had anything, and okay. when we do our Christmas, it'll probably be 20, 2,000. You know. So then leave 2,000, 1,800, 2,000 left. What it what it does? It puts it back in your fund balance, which will carry over in like your checking account okay. balance. But if you want to change lower this one and increase yours i think we probably could do fine with a little less if you i don't like that <laughs> i'm just saying I'm just, what, what i'm getting at if there's stuff. if there's 1800 or 2000 left after you do whatever you're doing this year then couldn't that not be moved over to 23 and then drop and still leave it at 4000 or 3000 so, or whatever so the way it works um this budget will get a approved at the numbers that we that we all agree on and that you do your legislation on if i need to increase it that's when i come back and we do a supplemental and we have to do legislation to say now i need to increase the line so it doesn't roll over you have a checkbook it just goes back to the general it stays yeah, in the general funds okay. basic checkbook okay. so it can come over if we have unexpected items that aren't on this 2023 budget mm -hmm. and they come over with a supplemental and on top of that too, we normally have a like a summer barbecue, but we did we didn't have it this year. So that's something too. I want to we want to beef up and definitely have that in 2023. It just got short staffed and mm -hmm. we just got busy this year with the development. Mm -hmm. And I'd rather, like I said, keep it in there. I want to reduce it and have stuff to go back and be a thousand dollars short. Because at the end of the day, we can give a, a decent holiday party to our to our staff, you know, who are very well deserved. Where was the last one? There? Is it Smith? It's still did it at the Shelter House, and everybody brought a dish. We just mm -hmm. we catered the chicken and the okay. basic um, food. 
So the new things that me and Mr. Mayor talked about last year about possibly like doing something with the dragons or something. So there's a lot that can be, you know, still worked out with that. Okay. I was just asking questions. I wasn't saying we needed to cut it. Yeah. I think I offered that, so yeah. I, I won't do that again. <laughs> <laughs> they'll, they'll, they'll hurt Keep me back money. in the office. Oh, <laughs> we want our money. Any other questions on general fund for uh, special events? Um, have we started to, I know Bill and I talked about this with the development pending behind the ballpark where the fireworks typically get shot mm -hmm. off. Have we started looking at alternative sites? Not yet, because that's something the firework companies are coming in to do. I'm not, we're not just killed in that. I don't think that's going to impact next year's show. What time is the year after? No, it might be 24, it might be the year. Because they're going to do that rental side first. Uh, mm -hmm. But they'll be leveling and all that stuff first before they do all that stuff in ground. <coughs> but we can definitely ask them for sure. Okay, we've got lands and buildings. That kind of um, holds a lot of our joint expenses, and it goes for the buildings and the um, capital. So, four hundred eighty-three thousand is under the lands and buildings for general fund for next year. Any questions on that one? Professional services was increased. Um, we added for, we're putting all of our IT under one line item. We used to split them out into different funds. And we are also adding uh, Huff and Tree Company. Huff and Tree Company for some services that's under maintenance of facility. So I hired a contractor to take care of all our Main Street trees, which is overdue. Yeah. So they're actually this November going to be starting on that. That's around a fourteen thousand dollar year contract. I think he does it for twelve thousand eight hundred, but we put him for fourteen just in case. And then we also signed a contract with professional property maintenance bill around and do file bed, etc. So we don't have uh, worry about an hourly crew having to do that. So that's also included in that line item. Um, quick question for you, Mr. Kitko, or whoever wants to answer, I think you'd be the better one to ask. Um, when you're going out of town, right at Water Dogs, you know that the, the bridge of the bike path is on, there's a big tree that's kind of, not, it's not a big tree, but it's a, it's a tree, and it blocks that whole view of the bridge, and that was always a nice view to see. Who's prop that goes down the hill on that, who's, who is that, who's responsible for that? Um, I'll have to look it up on the GIS. I was just curious. I don't know where the that, property line is. If, we could, if, it, if it is ours, I don't know if we could put a few bucks in there to, to clear that view of that bridge. If, if, we're, if we're to cut some trees, we already got to build in usually maintenance of uh, infrastructure. Okay. So most, most line items carry that type of stuff where it could be a, a $500, $1,000 to do. Okay. Those are built in into regular line items like uh, facilities, infrastructure, and equipment. Okay. And then the the, the the street maintenance building wouldn't be under this. It'd be under streets, right? Okay. Thank you. Any other questions for lands and buildings expense into the general fund? Moving on to mayor's court. We're still kind of um, experimenting with it since we only started half the year. So um, it could be something that we have to increase expenditures or wages. Um, but we'll come back again as a supplemental if need be. But we uh, we put in for um, we had 47 this year. We put in 50. Then we have miscellaneous. Ma'am. Oh yes. Is, is the marriage court paying for itself? Is it doing what we're we'll bringing in? Is it paying for all the expenses and? wages and all that stuff and giving the city any benefit or not and it's to only date. it's only started I well know. it won't I, i'll say no to date because we put a lot of money into getting it ready so there was expenses to get the building housed and the supplies yeah. they need and once those fixed costs kind of work their way out because of the revenue coming in i think by the end of the year i'll be able to get you a better projection of where we're at on our finance reports I did want. Maybe I didn't make it plain enough. <laughs> I can't. I, I, I know we had money that we to set it up with, but on the day-to-day -day <laughs> operation or the week-to-week -week operation, what we pay have going out. Do we have enough coming in to cover those expenses? 
not the startup fees and all that. Because I know it doesn't hasn't done that yet. On on last week's report, I mean the finance report, it's on there. It's yeah. It, what what the mayor's court brought in and. It's, it's going to be tricky because, as I stated at multiple council meetings, we're never going to know a true number, and we might not even know at the end of the year because how the magistrate does it, he'll sit there and say, if you get your license the next amount of months and your fine reduced. So you're never going to have a true, accurate picture of that. So the, the, fund, the money you see now, mm -hmm. two months down the road, can actually be increased for two months prior because this person did or did not comply with the magistrate's order. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. But it would only be, uh, show up on the month that it happened, not the previous month. Right. Yeah. 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 So as I'm saying, by the, as we get closer to the end of the year, we'll have something, well, even the close year end in, this, in December is still not going to be a 100% too accurate figure because you may have some stuff that happened in December that he's going to let you fix in through the next year. So mayor's court typically does not make a lot of money. I mean, they're not money makers. It's, they're there for your internal control. So your citizens don't have to go all, all the way to the county. But I think if I remember, Eden was generating somewhere around twenty five thousand, which I, I mean, yeah. which isn't a lot, yeah. but it's still profit. And ours well, is ours is going to take some time to get up to. That's a lot of money, it. I think twenty five grand. I mean, if it's making that kind of money, then that, mm -hmm. that's good. But if it's costing us twenty five grand every mm -hmm. six months or every year, then it's it's uh, it's like yeah. it's like when we went with C CCA. Give it a few years and see how it plays out. It's going to take some time for it to kind It'll of level out. To level out, and then I'd say about two three years, we'll probably have a good idea of what that's going to go in. But yeah, it's probably going to take a loss this year. To be honest with you, it probably will. Oh yeah. Okay. I mean, currently we're making about thirty two hundred dollars a month. I mean, we're bringing in about thirty two hundred dollars a month. And that's not including any kind of expenditures. No, that's, that's before including. payouts. So. Yeah. And mm -hmm. on the finance reports mm -hmm. under the revenue, it's under the general fund, it's under fines and court. Mm -hmm. And then you can go to your expense report, like right here's mayor's report, here's your wages, here's the contractual, here's all mm -hmm. of our expenditures. And this is where we can track month to day and year to day and then compare it with the revenue. And I can pull that together. But okay. it's on the it's on the monthly reports that you can also look at. Mm -hmm. Well, I see it on there, but So there's eleven thousand nine hundred expense so far as of September and then the revenue report. Six, about 6,500. Yeah, yeah. So we're, we're catching up. So that helps answer for now and okay. I can get more detail later. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other Good mayor's question. court questions? So we have miscellaneous um, under the general fund and that total is 108,500. Not a big change from last year. And then we go finally is our transfers. This is where the general fund is money is being moved into the other accounts that need supplemental, supplemented. So we have the uh, government center, transfer to the pool, cemetery, and debt. That is the completion of our general fund expenditures. <coughs> Any questions left on general fund? What's the um, the uh, 235 widening project? So a lot of line items are still in there from previous projects. Okay. It just I don't know if they're kept for a certain time, but then eventually you can rename them when you have a new project. Okay. Yeah, because I think my report goes. I have like I was 10 just years curious why it was there. Tabs. <laughs> No money's been put in it. It's yeah, I know. I was just—it was just weird to see it. It's like, oh, we widened the street again. Yeah, it was. Like I think that was in two thousand nine. It was a while back. Yeah. If I expand, if I expand my spreadsheet, I've got ten years on it. So okay. on that, it's on that tab. Gotcha. Years you don't see right now. Good question. If we're done with the general fund. We'll go to the street. So the ending balance projected is eight eight hundred forty thousand. Why can't I find this email? So I'm trying to find an email calling sent. So can you find it again? Why is it not showing up in the inbox? Open your sent folder. What you send it to me? This one here. Yep. <coughs> All right. So to give you an idea, because I know Mr. Bonds is his first go round with council. So historically, don't let that seven six four. I don't even know what it is. What is that? 
687 or 687. So that looks eye opening. Okay, so basically how I said earlier, how we estimate, underestimate by the close out the year. So give you an example of, of years past. Uh, the 2019 general fund was, was reflecting. Um, that uh, email was sent. We oh, already, you got it right we there. We already reduced some. Yep, yep. Yeah. So, yeah, so that set, we already do something. Give you an idea. It's very common for us to have that over oh, okay. right there, but it actually, when you close out the end of the year, it actually flips on the, on the, on the positive side. <clears throat> And traditionally, we've been uh, we've been increasing our general fund the last few years. I expect the same to be here based on. But we also have a lot of new items that so that that's my concern. So as I said earlier, we now have a planning department that we are funding. We have other things that we have added. So that 668 is kind of high, you know. But as I brought up, Ms. Harris, you know, we have done it before and kind of pulled out on the top. But it is something that we're going to have to look for, look at at the end of the year and see how much we actually collect, come up over that 668. Um, because if it wasn't for our, our reserve balance, that's how much of the hole we would be. And, and Ben, this one, I'm sorry, I shouldn't say it, but it's wrong. The um, 2022 column, because we do our budget so early, this revenue and expense are There's only in change. three three quarters mm -hmm. of the so once we get down to the end of the year and we had money appropriated and we didn't spend it it usually nine times out of ten will re this bottom line will you know come back over mm -hmm. and and we've had a surplus every year mm -hmm. and that's what we try for we can't go into a negative year after year well obviously the general fund will get back into a shape that was in 2014 so that's just um and that wouldn't be good no no, we've all been there. Everybody really wants to go there again. So I mean, so we do watch it. So right now we're what, about 1.8 million ahead for this year received versus paid out. Way up here. Expenses paid, revenue received. Right. I mean, I'm on it from last yeah, quarter. Yeah. From last meeting. Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's doing it's doing good, and I adjusted some of these to to get it tied into the three quarter, estimating what I still needed for the end of the year. And what we'd still be receiving in. Any other questions under the general fund? I just have one uh -huh. question, just probably for Randy, just to kind of get an idea of your kind of thought process through this or whatever. <coughs> um, as far as, you know, any budget, be it your household budget, be it your business, whatever, you always have <coughs> your. These are items that are kind of, if things go south and revenues don't come in, these are mm -hmm. the things that aren't going to happen. We just know that these are our cushion areas or whatever. Do you have those in your mind built into this? So what we would do is we'd look at your your contract for professional services, that $105,000 line item would go. We could streamline and be a little bit more tight with our budgeting. Um, so when this first came to me, I did. I pulled mm -hmm. into my office and said, I don't like this. So I went back and I slashed all the stuff that we could get away with and go down. It only took $50,000 out of the general fund. Now I did not touch the professional services. Um, our budget is, doesn't have a lot of fluff, so a lot of these expenditures are, are needed. So we would have to look at how much we contract out, and quite frankly, we would have to look at the positions that are paid out of the general fund, because these are the general fund balances. Um, if it wasn't the history of the city to have budgets like this, I would be a lot more concerned. But the city of New Carlisle has, has to historically always had to go into their reserves for budgeting purposes. At the end of the year, it usually plays out. So, and that's what I mean, plays out, it usually falls up on the positive side. It's just how we do it. The only way that we can get around this is, and we don't want to go back to do it because it is a lot of work. We can pass a temporary budget and close out the year with actual numbers and sit down and do a budget for them, but it requires for us to pass a temporary budget. And we used to do it like that in the past. Um, I do have some concerns, to be honest with you. I actually was on the phone today with our, our, with our tax administrator about how much we're collecting. And I have told you guys, each and every one, some point in time, this is going to level out. Compared to this tax collections, this point in time last year, last year we were up 18.6%, now we're up just over 7 
So that's any evidence that at some point in time this is going to go out. And they have sent out the letters for tax collection. That's why you don't need the letters go out there and went out with. So the reason I'm behind all these developments is because of what I see in these numbers. Because you can say in about five to ten years, that collection is going to level out. We don't have new housing coming in. New Carlisle doesn't have higher new limits. Our average income here in the city is $42,000 a year. So another thing I'm having Vicki do, our tax administrators, look at our revenue, how, it, how it's coming. Where are we lacking from that 18 to 7.6? Is that a personal tax or is that business tax? Once we have that, we'll, we'll kind of falter and kind of adjust and move forward that way. If it's business, that's one thing, and that's a large chunk of it. If it's a personal tax, that just is more evidence that we need to get a either higher earners in here or we need to expand the tax base with new housing. Um, I am concerned. I, I, I'm five years down the road, and I can tell you now, year five, I think, if we don't have any new revenue coming in, the city is going to be having to do some major cuts or put a tax increase on. But yeah, when it comes to slashing that general fund, people and some minor stuff, you know, we could, we'd have to look at services too. We'd have to stop limiting the brush pickup maybe because that's some of the stuff we can do out of parks and rec, parks and rec, that would go. You know, so any of your extra that are non um, volatile to city operations would be the absolute most to go. Your fireworks, you know, even the employee Christmas party, you know. Um, and we could probably get that 668 down to that 400, but like I said, we we added some stuff, you know. The city's lack uh, from a lot of services. Um, the reason why we've got the fund balances where they are in the general fund is because of all of us doing multiple jobs and us not doing things that we cost money. Um, I can't do both jobs. We need a planner. We need a city manager. That's going to be cheap. That's what it's been. It's cheaper for us to contract out to have nice flower beds than to hire another full-time staff. So then there's some of the trade-offs we got to do. Um, so we'll see how it plays out. But yes, it is on my radar. It is for sure. Perfect. Mm. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Any okay. We're on street construction. Actually, I'm just going to go down to, because all of these are very small. Um, well, where do you want to, where do you want to look at them? Well, I had a quick question on this uh, street construction. Sure. Unless I'm, you know, I'm reading it wrong, which is probably the case. Under revenue, shouldn't it list the, um, the uh, levy for the street funds that was passed years ago? So that's a different fund. Oh, okay. That's down. Okay. Yeah. These funds are derived from vehicle tax and motor and gas tax. Okay. Yep. This yeah. is the one fund, just real quick, that we did not want the state um, to reduce the gas tax. Right. At our level, we do not want them to cut that gas mm. tax back. That's th right. that's this. Oh, wages, training, contractual, a little bit of capital. Total expenditures for the street is 384,540, actually less than we budgeted this year. That puts an ending balance of 52,724. Any questions on the street? And we're watching that ending balance too. Also, the auditors, when we do our monthly financial reports, if we're not getting what we're anticipating on revenue, we, we cut expenditures. I mean, we can't overspend what we're not getting in on that part. <coughs> state highway revenues, the uh, vehicle tax, state tax, and we have uh, American Rescue Funds coming in. Expenditures, contractual materials, three hundred ninety-seven thousand, and that is for maintenance of infrastructure. Probably has some pretty good projects that we're going to use the American Rescue Funds for maintenance of curbs. Okay. That brings the ending balance. We're using pretty much everything we get on that. Good. Yeah, we said to save up quite a few years for our 20 percent uh, portion of the urban paving coming uh, late spring. They don't do it all for free. What? 
I know, right? So, and because we don't receive much um, gas tax, the split towards State Highway, we I think we almost saved uh, seven, eight years. As you can see, that fund balance went up. Now, all of a sudden, I'm going to dump it, and then what? In 15 years from now, it'll be doing going all over again. And street permissive tax. Our revenue is the permissive tax, and then our expenditures are our wages, and we kind of keep that one balanced. That one will balance out by the end of the year. Street improvement levy. This is the one you asked on mm -hmm. the real estate taxes, homestead, so our revenue in, and expenses are the maintenance of infrastructure. And we put it all back in. Ending balance of 7000 Again, trying to appropriate everything we've got available. What do you, um, while we're on streets, what do you... I mean, how many streets are you hoping to get next year? Well, so out of that two hundred thirty thousand, um, we're going to have about thirty-seven thousand. Don't call me on a number yet, but we just got the grant. Just got the phone call uh, yesterday, I think it was, uh, for Fenwick. We got approved, so we'll pay ten percent of the four hundred thirty-seven thousand. So we'll be forty-three thousand out of that. If you know if the project comes in under bid or lower than that amount, then our 10% goes down as well. So, the, and it's always had those. The rest of the money will be the Clark County com, uh, wide paving, which as the goal was, um, uh, Henry, Villa, uh, Falcon, um, West Washington, and then if I can add and get it in, because we're a little bit more, I'm gonna try to add that little section of Walsh in there. But that's kind of what the goal is right now. Who knows? Fuel right, prices right. now are heading back up, just which is not a good sign. Yeah. But yeah, we're those those same projects plus Fenwick now. Awesome. Yep. Any other questions on street improvement? Okay, we're over to emergency ambulance capital. Revenue sources, taxes, levies, and we're saving for. The ambulance down the road. Um, the, we've been putting, we put out a hundred thousand to save for the ambulance. We won't actually be spending it, but we'll, we still have a, a positive net. Then we have emergency ambulance operating, real estate taxes, and homestead are, are a revenue source along with Elizabeth Township and the uh, EMS that we. Uh, Receive the run <coughs> from, and the expenditures are the wages, all of their contractual expenditures, materials and supplies, a little bit of capital, and he has a good positive ending balance. Any questions for the ambulance operating or ambulance capital? Mm -hmm. We've got a fire capital, revenue sources, real estate, and homestead taxes, and they basically just have fees for the auditors, and there's, we're going to save those balances for the fire truck. Got an estimated 337000 in the balance. Fire operating, real estate taxes, again, is your revenue source, and they have wages and their operational expenditures, training, contractual, material supplies, their total expenditures of $321,815. They have just a little bit of net difference, but they have a, a healthy reserve still, a healthy ending balance. Okay. Question on fire and fire department personnel in general. A few months ago, I brought up getting them a raise. Is there anything in here for that? So we did pencil in um, wages. I think it went up by 20000 It actually, um, we overestimated this year, and it's under. So we, we have, let's see, over in the ambulance. Yeah, went up 20000 for wages under the ambulance. 
and under the fire, we actually reduced it, but it still includes a potential increase. It's just it was overestimated this year, and we're coming in a lot lower at this point of the year. So, of what amount of increase? Well, right now we're at 64. I'm asking her for right the here. amount of increase. I believe it was cheap. Was it a dollar? Hourly. Oh, the Are you asking for hourly wage? They'll take our fire only from 11 to 13, EMTs from 14 to 16, uh, intermediates from 16 to se uh, 15 to 17, and paramedics from 16 to 18. If I remember correctly, though, that was just brought up by you. The council did not motion for those raises to happen, correct? Correct. We so didn't make a motion. He did come to us, and he did come to me. Mm -hmm. um, you guys will be getting something from an ordinance. Um, um, but I'll be honest with you. I think they need to wait until the, uh, the levy's going to pass. So that's something we'll have to discuss as we go on. Um, it will become to you guys as a form of, of an ordinance. Um, but it probably will not be January. Um, we'll have a uh, renewal levy coming up. If that Should that does not pass, you're looking at a reduction of about 100 Gs in uh, two of those funds. So um, my suggestion would be to bring that ordinances once we know that their levy has passed and their funds will be there to support it. But yes, we have, the, these current numbers do reflect some raises. Mm -hmm. But we're getting in that era again, we're playing catch up and, you know, Bethel Township raises it, so we got to raise it. So that's at some point in time, we got to have a serious discussion about how we're going to kind of alleviate that. And this really comes up when? May. 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 We'll be doing legislation on here soon. I think that's the most respectful. I mean, that's a very logical thing to do with government. I, mean, uh, I don't think it's going to fail, but there's a chance of that. Mm -hmm. The community's been pretty, I mean, the trend, has been, the trend has been there that they support it almost every time as far as I can remember. But we haven't had a levy since the political landscape has changed. Right. Uh, to be honest with you, and that's the thing I have in the back of my mind is people just tend to don't support the government anymore. Now, I think with his fire and EMS and police, that's a little different. Yeah. You always have to take into account. We don't know what the finances are of our people. You know, it's clear if it's indication by our tax collections, and if it is a personal tax collection, they're not making as much as they were last year. So people may choose not to renew that just to have their property tax bill not as much, not as high. <coughs> Any other questions for fire or ambulance? We'll move on to Quirk Accords. The computer fund is a new fund that we just created this year, and it's um, for the expenditures that the mayor's court pays. And the same with the computer fund. So, those there, some just kind of jumping down there. Health levy. Um, Real estate taxes revenue, and we we pay it out. Um, other than the auditor fees, we give it all back to Clark County. So this ending balance is reflecting zero because whatever I get is what what I write in the check at the end of the year. American Rescue Fund. Um, we're done receiving money next year. We had our two payments, 2021 and 2022 but it does carry a fund balance that we have not spent all of in 2021, 2022, so that carries over and we will be expending it in 2023. The, uh, that can only be spent on certain items, correct or not? Yes, it's going to the, a um, little bit for the street, it's infrastructure, and water gets a little bit and sewer, and okay. got it divvied out so we can spend it all. Good place for it to go. It's well needed in those, all three of them. Any questions on the American Rescue Fund? It was a very nice amount of money that we all received. We're on the police levy. And I'm just going to go down to the bottom on this one. Um, total expenses, 768 Not anything really increased. And fund balance will be at 350000 You can go back up to the contractual there. So, Mr. Bond, I can't remember if you voted on the last police levy or not. I mean, police contract or not. I think you did. So, how they do the contract is we have five deputies, and they will charge us. The contract amount will be five deputies, 
highest rate of pay, and then for family insurance. So that contract amount could be seven hundred some thousand dollars. Now, if we have five deputies with the highest step pay, and then the family insurance, that's what we can expect to pay. We normally don't ever do that. Yeah, we don't ever do that. So I'm not saying it can't happen. Um, so this is another thing that we have to look at because this is funded by our income tax. So that is a direct connection into that 18.6% to 7% we are now. So we can sit there and look at this in five years. If we don't have any more money coming in, we're going to reduce heavily the amount of cost we have to reduce that contract price. Um, 0.5 of our income tax goes into that. If you look at revenues right there, so it's um, that's how this is completely funded. Um, scroll back down to the bottom, bottom balance if you don't mind. Um, historically, um, we kind of average, average out the year in, in the black. Um, so we'll have to see as the year gets closer how, how it closes out. Some of the things that we do want to start moving forward to kind of alleviate some big upfront purchases instead of buying a car is leasing them from here, from here on out. Um, that includes um, the gas, the maintenance, the whole nine yards. So as our aging fleet ages, instead of replacing that, we can lease. And I think that's the best way period because my goal in five to 10 years is to bring the police department back into the crawl out. Once we have the developments taken off, we can support it. Ditch the contracting and have our own department. So I'm not going to pay eight, nine, ten deputies for Clark County Sheriff's Office to control our city and not have any control over what they do. Any other questions? Why do we not have control over what they do? Um, because they are police officers and we cannot tell, I can't tell them to go arrest someone, I can't tell them to do any of that, but we can have more local control and saying, hey, you know, um, we need to go uh, issue this zoning uh, code enforcement ticket. It's a, a code enforcement guy doing it. They don't do that. So they're not our deputies. So that's what I mean by more control. And since they're, and un since they're unionized, if that plays into it as There's well. a lot of things that come into play with it, yeah. This is not our department. But even if it was our department, they'd still be unionized, and that may still play into it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but then we'll have a lot more control over hiring and firing, too. Any other questions on the police? The next are our uh, debt, general bond retirement uh, fund. I'm going to go down to uh, revenue expense. The ending balance is 4000 On the um, revenue, we get a little bit from real estate and homestead, but that is one of the transfer ends that we saw from the general fund was transferred out. So this amount changes with whatever we need to make our debt payment. We had one of them get, uh, will be, is paid off in 2022. So that transfer in is only 30,000. It's usually 100,000. And that should uh, keep my balance in the black. Or if we need, we have to increase a little bit from the general fund. Twin Creeks infrastructure bond is um, we stopped putting a transfer in from the general fund. We only have a few years left. And the reason we stopped doing that, we had a healthy balance and we're using our balance to pay off the debt until it gets low enough. It should, it should finish out on its own and maybe just have a small, small supplement on that last year. When, when is that Twin Creeks paid off? Twin Creeks mm. is paid off. Mm. It's like 2026, 20, I think. 26? 2026. Mm -hmm. and my mom mentioned the other day because they, they paid the extra was it sixty dollars a month on their on the house payment out there for twenty years. It's like a couple more years and it's off. <laughs> hey, we appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. Any questions on our debt? Water. Here we go. Getting into the infrastructure now. The enterprise fund water revenue from the consumption from our, our, uh, our users. And we have a little bit of a transfer in from the American Rescue Fund to help support a project that um, we need to do. So expenditures, got wages, contractual, materials, supplies. This is a special project, uh, service pump building that we're using the American Rescue Funds for. We have debt at 
water plant still hurts. It's a big one. And our ending balance is 102,144. And we're watching that one really close. It's the debt is very high and very hard to not use fund balance. How many more? Excuse me. How many more years on it? Twenty-six as well, isn't it? July of twenty-six is our last payment of one hundred eight thousand. It's a two hundred sixteen thousand annual payment. So yes, that will be a, a good year overall for the city and a, some uh, old debt. Then you'd be building a new one, right? No, we're good on water plant. <laughs> um, does this fund cover new wells? And I don't mean cover it as in your project. I mean, just I know we've discussed in the future of drilling new wells. I mean, is that there? There, there is that potential. Um, and Mr. Bridge and I, we we discuss water quite often in, in wells, and uh, this expansion is huge in a tower, possibly. But yes, some funds. I think in the last year and in this year, put a little bit towards those uh, other capital funds to help start funding that. But hopefully by the time that the developments start going, debt comes off, yeah. and then that's when Should that should be about the perfect timing. Yeah, yeah. We had we had just discussed we're in this gray area right now of pre-development, end of three years of debt, and then growth, and we're we're kind of in that gray area right now to really keep an eye on stuff. Any questions on the water phone? Actually, I do have one. Just, I mean, and this is going farther than where we technically need to go. But you sit there, you know, you look at the ending balance of water drop. Um, and I know you have no clue, but I mean, you expect another large drop in '24 because of that? Because I, because I mean, I know we're not. We we we've had multiple discussions about rate increases. We're right. hoping, we're trying to get it to maintain till that debt's off right. because you don't want to raise the rates and then the debt comes mm -hmm. off and then your your fund's healthy but um it's it's really we watch it every month it's it's not going to continue with this amount mm -hmm. if this was actual right. for another year or two without supplement but there are a lot of projects <coughs> getting done it's had a lot of maintenance this year it's had a lot of big what, big meters and we've got a couple of things that you typically don't expect that pitless adapter and that brake those yes you can always have annual maintenance those were unexpected mm -hmm. completely and just to i forgot i had this pencil down for 2024 um, when we turned scarf road water tower over to a contractor to hold the maintenance per orc they can they basically all but own it um, our last year of the 115,500 is 2023 um, so that means we have now paid off the original painting of the outside, the painting of the inside, the whole nine yards, the addition of the mixer. So we will have a maintenance, tower maintenance reduction of about 62000 in 2024. Nice. So it'll go to 53, and that has a potential of each year going up about 5%, but our goal still is to keep it in their hands. Mm -hmm. We're always going to be paying for it, but it looks great. There's not a structural issue, so yeah. right now we're still going to trend. But yes. Um, we will have a little less in appropriations next year of about that amount. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Question on the water. You mentioned raising the rates on water. Didn't, wasn't there a five-year uh, progressive rate increase done that it expires, here, I think, in a couple of years? Is that still in play? Uh, water expired two or three years ago. Uh, we are currently in a wastewater one. Wastewater is in, yeah. We have two okay. more. Uh, 2025, I believe, is the last year of the wastewater. Okay. At this point. Yeah. I knew it was water. I yeah, there is one. We, we, had a, <laughs> we had a water increase, what, two, two years two, ago? Two, three two, years, two, years, two years, ago. years ago. Finish it up. Yeah, we did a four-year water rate increase, and it ended about, I think, two years ago. 2020 was the last year, I think. Hmm. So should we consider Yes. No. 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 Absolutely not. I think that's across the board. How we can work this magic to make it work. I mean, there's only so much you can do. There's only so much you can squeeze out there's of it. There's only so much you can do in general funds, though, and not in a position to supplement it. I mean, some of, the, some of the things we've been trying to get you guys to do is small rate increases yearly and out, where it's very small and incremental. That way, the citizens are used to it. 
um, instead of every three, four years, you get hit with this massive increase. When I say massive, last time we were there for hours, and it turned out to be cents, and people were okay with it. But this is enterprise fund. Until that debt runs off, we have an obligation to make sure that fund survives. So small step increases until that debt comes off is probably the best way you guys can handle that. Where are we at, um, where are we at now, Howie? Oh, what's that? On the water. Uh, per, a rate per thousand, we're at $10.46. Oh, is it That's the total water and sewer combined. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. yep. yeah, it's eighteen dollars a bar. Crazy. Yeah, yeah we're, we're paying. Thousand. We're paying yeah. for the debt of the past. But that's what we're paying for. We're yeah. paying for the debt. That's what it is. You know. Because um, here's another way you look at it. Because we go through this stuff. You, your utility rates are high here. No one can argue that they are high. But here's the deal: the quality of water you get is phenomenal. Phenomenal. And on top of that, you may be high in the utilities, but you're super low in income tax. So that may also needs to be taken into consideration. You know, they may pay higher rates, but you know, you can go some rough pay 2.25% 2, 2 and your income tax rate nearly 3% in other places. You know, so we're high in some areas, but very low in the other. Well, Howie, could you, could you look and maybe do some research what the other surrounding communities are? We, we do it uh, every year, uh, was the city of Oakwood, um, it is now Miamisburg, I think, does, uh, we have it up at the building, I can email you a couple or from last year, it is this long, it has a water, sewer, and then what your combined is, and we, we're usually middle, middle, upper combined, we are not the most expensive water, um, I think Yellow Springs now is, and John, uh, not Jamestown, uh, Jefferson Regional, uh, but they did huge expansions, uh, Yellow Springs just did a new water plant. Um, but I caution because I do not like the comparison because mm -hmm. we treat Processes. It, the way we process Enon, for example, Enon almost pumps the same amount of water we do out, but all they do is soften. They don't filter. They don't do a lot of things. So their water is less than half the cost of ours. So compare us by the amount we pump and the, the customers looks completely different. Is that, is that a public, is that a pu public information per se? Like, could you? Whether it's you or private citizen call and say, you know, how, what's your processes in your, to compare how things are processed to other communities? Is that public knowledge information? I mean, anybody can call the plant and say, hey, are you ion exchange? Are you lime soda softening? Do you do you have um, iron manganese uh, filter system? Y you know, yeah, you anybody can call. What I'm saying is, could you generate something that shows us slash citizens? This is what we do versus them, and so on and so on. I mean, not everybody, because that would take a long time. To yeah, it, it's very complex when you start talking in real technical terms. Right. We filter and soften. Okay. Um, some people just soften, and but then uh, Springfield, Dayton, uh, almost other cities, they're a whole completely. They're just way, way, way different. Like the, they have lagoons. They have that lime you see on Route Four. We see a nice mm -hmm. aqua blue water. They reclaim. Yeah, they, it's not it a is, beach. Hmm? It's not a beach. Yeah, I know. <laughs> we told you that twice. <laughs> but I've never liked to participate in that because they're like, oh, New Kalau. We don't, why is New Kalau so high? Well, it's just different. Mm -hmm. They don't know about the Twin Creeks. They don't know how all that stuff. So and I like the way you said that maybe we could do a better job of educating people how, how better our water is. For example, my water, first time I did this room, I mean, it is so hard. It's such hard water. I mean, it must spot so over, over everything that was in the dishwasher. So, um, I think you have hard water issues too, don't you? It's oh, super yeah. hard water. I have a well. I'm yeah. farm. I mean, my <laughs> position on water is, is do I think our water is a little high? Yes, but at the same time, and I've had so many conversations, whether it's through Facebook Messenger, one on one at a restaurant, mm -hmm. if I bump into somebody. Is it, yeah, it's high. But one of the first things it says, do you ever see our water brown like a mm -hmm. neighboring community in the north? Um, unless cheese flush or south. I mean, yeah, or south. I mean, I've never seen water just randomly come out nasty looking unless mm -hmm. he's, and it's only a light color brown when you're flushing. It's never just, you know, I've got a tub full of brown water. It never happens. I've never right. seen it happen. But the other thing is, is it's water. It's what, you know, it's my opinion, it's what you have to have water to live. You don't need your net for And I'm not saying that you, that this justifies a high water price, but you never see anybody complain that their their internet bill is extremely high. It's always new calls water. But the one out of all your utility bills, water is the one that brings life. Mm -hmm. I mean, at the end of the day, it's the only one. I'm not saying that we should be able to charge astronomical prices for it. But that, for me personally, is the least one I'm going to complain about because clean, fresh water is an amazing thing to have. Mm -hmm. Inconsistent. But, but I, and, yeah, and consistent. I don't want to see it increase, but, you know. I can tell you, I do have a, I had been a 
working with Mr. Bridge on just a couple small numbers just to see where it would go. Um, so 5%, and I've never been able to offer in, pre, in my 20 years a 5% a rate increase. It's always been we don't want an annual 2%, which is very small. Um, you make more money up doing a 2%, 2% each year mm -hmm. than you do going zero, and then you guys slam a $3 on them right. all of a sudden. That is not good. Because um, it's hard to recoup the money. Meanwhile, you're compounding your money as you go on smaller amounts. But um, so a five percent would be fifty-two cents more per thousand, and that would generate about fifty thousand mm -hmm. dollars. So just if you want five percent, it's fifty-two cents per thousand would generate about fifty thousand more a year, yeah. based on our current consumption. Anyone else for water? Oh, I'd love some, thank you. <laughs> I'll be right back. Right there. <laughs> Charge your dollar. Put it towards the fund. <laughs> Two fifty. All right, we'll go on to waste water <coughs> if there's no more questions. <coughs> so wastewaters, um, wages, contractual material supplies, and capital. Uh, a lot of capital improvements. The um, debt and our total is one million four hundred thirty-one thousand for an ending balance of three hundred nine. I think mm -hmm. our debt payment is, um, or not debt payment, our capital is a the Honey Creek lift. Oh, Engineering, yeah. yeah. And then do we, we put sure. in uh, and the, the rate increases are coming in, so yep. the revenue is good. Any questions on wastewater? And also those uh, few loans that um, council approved, uh, was it three years ago through New Carlisle Federal to do the one clarifier and to do something else, Those, this is their last year as well. So it was a quick three-year loan, four-year loan with, uh, I think, a two-point-some percent interest rate. So it was a nice quick. It helped out till the rates um, helped kick in. But that's, that debt's coming off as well, I think, yep. in 23. Mm -hmm. well, Colleen, before we... Oh, 3.1. If they're done with waste, if anybody's done with waste, I think I missed my opportunity on streets. I want to talk about the HUD. So we can do that when we're toward the end or go back to it. We're... Um, I don't... We don't care. It's good now. Yeah, yeah. I apologize. I totally forgot that the hut would be under streets, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Is there mm -hmm. any, I know we've talked about it and how we, I think you've done a good job of getting that area cleaned up a little bit with some of the old junk that was sitting back there. And I know I'd mentioned, you know, some sort of cost. Is there any money in there for any, for any cosmetic looks of the hut, whether you hire a company to blast the, the roof of that thing and have it re just something. It looks so awful. I mean, it's, it's an ugly building. I mean, it's one of the first... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I know that you don't want to do that. That's a lot of money. But, it, I mean, what would it cost to do something like that, to just give it a clean look, a fresh paint job, just something that doesn't look so yucky? I could probably get, I could get some uh, quotes, um, maybe mm -hmm. try to hunt down a contract to estimate to blast that <laughs> and paint it. And it don't even have to be the whole thing, just the half of it, the face of the road. Uh, <laughs> we have a budget. <laughs> um, no, but I, I could get some prices, yeah, in, in, in the grand scheme of things, if it's structurally sound, which it is, uh, looks, you know, I, I get you 100%. Yeah. I, mean, is anybody, um, I mean, I don't want to be the only one nitpicking. I mean, does anybody else agree that it would be nice to give that thing a, a little bit of a... I, mean, I see it every time reason. I go... What, what would really be nice... What you're looking for? Uh, well, and we've had conversation before on it, is rip it down and build another one, but we don't have a million dollars to do that way. Right no, so if you could paint it for five that. grand, that would be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Which yeah. that won't happen either. It'll probably be about fifty grand. I mean, do you have? I mean, at all? Just a, I, what it would cost to blast? I'm paint. usually good with estimate. I this is I have no clue. I mean, I, I, I don't. Have no idea. Not even. I, I 50, don't even. Ten hundred. I can tell you to restain the shelter house, which we'll be doing in twenty three, is about ten grand. Okay. To restain the shelter house which is good for about eight to ten years okay well, let me ask you a question let's just say he comes so, back with an estimate of you know let's just say it's fifty thousand you know that's in the middle of the road as far as a hundred and zero i mean is, is that something that's doable so your ending balance right now with the proposed budget is fifty two thousand oh yeah okay well that's so, a no. but, 
I don't think again, it be, I don't it's a it's a not to exceed. See. If you want to put something in, and he finds the quote, if it, if we don't have it, and that's just me. I mean, I can't. You know, that's a whole council discussion. It's fine. We can get quotes on it. If it's something we can look at. If it's not next year, maybe work towards it. I mean, it and my only reasoning is, is like I said, you know, we had brought up cleaning up some of the junky sure. stuff, and you've done a good job. Is if, especially now with Mary's court, we're going after people for cars in their backyard leaking sure. oil, or, you know, gutter. I think we need to be also set an example. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, I mean, I think clearly needs. I, I'm, I'm, I'm with you, 75 percent. But it's also a maintenance, and it's a facility. Right. Yeah, facility I don't expect it to be all materials. pretty with flowers, but I yeah. mean that roof is look. You know, you've cleaned it up, and it looks yeah. ten times better. So oh, I don't disagree. If I can, yeah, let me get some quotes and see. Where we can get, we're gonna we're gonna put twenty in, um, the fund balance here, and that way we at least have it earmarked. If it's above or that, then we'll have to reappropriate. If okay. not, then at least it's earmarked in there. Okay. I don't know if you're going yet. Yeah. Right, right, right. No idea. All right, thank you. <laughs> that might be get a quarter of it done. <laughs> he said he just wants the front <laughs> done. The part <laughs> facing five seventy one. No, it'd be the side part, not the front. The side. <laughs> what he's talking about, Alan. Yeah, you know, the front the probably do for ten bucks. <laughs> Or if I could paint the paintbrush the same like that, I'll do it. Take <clears throat> the top and just dump the paint. Well, right. it just kind of like yeah. that, kill, that kills that kills paint, man. Better. It does good coverage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> we put twenty in, so that brings the ending balance down to thirty-two, okay. with a little note just until he gets close. Pending, pending quote. Okay, thank you. What'd you put on maintenance of facilities? I put on maintenance. But that building is structurally not falling over anytime soon. Okay. The worst part's I'm against sorry. the ground. The, the, the worst part is where it touches the ground. Uh, where you have to the rock the rock rock facility. Facility. Yeah, yeah those are structurally like roads. Man, I got fucking nose. Oh no, I forgot my spray. <laughs> Some medicine makes it cold. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're done with wastewater. Pool. Okay, so this is where we got to have the hard heart. Um, the liner, I'll let Mr. Kiko do some updates on the fine details. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, it's a little over budget, what we budgeted for by like 20, 30,000. Um, there is no guarantee with it. Um, <coughs> our suggestion is to take the liner out, see how long the pool can operate, and then make the decision later on. It's just not worth the money to put that liner into that pool. It's just an aging facility. It is past its useful life. Um, so at some point in time, we're going to have to have a talk about the pool. And that's just what I come down to. Um, right now, there's a $20,000 transfer going in from the general fund. Um, and we have the savings set up for the liner. I think it's been, how much we put us? We put 40000 in this year, and we have 40 pending on an open PO from So we'll have 80 in there for the liner. So let's just say that council decides not to do that liner. Uh, the 40 will go back into the general fund balance. Um, or we keep it in the pool balance and let's see how it writes out. Stays, let you discuss that. Yeah. It, it stays in the pool balance. So it's going to put um, 80000 to the ending balance. So it would be 97, but we'll pull out the transfer for the general fund. So that will bring it down to 60 because we have budgeted. <coughs> how how much budgeted, is that liner now? He was... Let's know what the liner. What about it? How much was the, is the liner? So, now? so the original price was right around eighty. It's up to about one twenty-seven now. And we have eighty thousand no. potentially already in the fund for that. There is eighty there for okay. right now. So, if we get one more year out of the pool, there'll be another forty put in there. I assume. Uh, where's the forty? Where's the eighty thousand coming from? From the forty thousand from the general fund, two different times. Yes. So if we do it one more time, we'll have the money, and then the, it would probably be 150000 for the liner. Yeah, here's the biggest thing is the, the cost of it ha has grown faster than what we, we could do to put it in. The, the second part to that, and I've met this gentleman down there, they seem nice. It has a 10-year warranty. The liner has a 10-year warranty on it failing. If <laughs> anything causes it to fail, it will not be under warranty. 
And I'm going to tell you, they, they will fight it tooth and nail because they know this went in in, like, in the 60s. They already know what the deep end looks like. We drained it. He got down in there, and he's, he's like, I, I think it could work. Sure, it could work. We could pay you all this money, get it put in there. Two years later, we get a concrete shift. It tears the liner, and then we're out. That's what worries me is making that decision to go, well, I just want to make sure everyone is clear. I get the warranty, but we know how some warranties aren't covered because there was other issues that caused them. But it is warranty. <clears throat> The, the liner itself. So, so what would, and this is, I guess, question to council then. Uh, if we have eighty thousand in there and we keep putting forty thousand in every year, and we can get a couple more years out of the pool, we ain't never gonna have enough money to replace that pool. Oh, it's, no. Because that, that pool's gonna cost several million mm -hmm. to get the same thing you got, or maybe smaller. The pool is past its useful life. That you cannot argue that. Well, I, I agree with that. It's not but worth putting one hundred and forty thousand dollars into because something's going to ship, something's going to break. Right. Um, but to, to replace it, we would never have the money to do that unless we did a a spatial uh, levy or something for the pool. A lot of people in this town uses the pool. I, I mean, during the summer, I see a lot of people there all the time. Doesn't mean they're our residents. So. Well, this hey, is people, true. This, this people is true. use the pool. This past year, it was down a lot. Yeah. Um, the pool's always been an area of hot topic. Yeah. We look at it differently than council does. Um, to me, it's a business decision. I mean, it is strictly a business decision. It has never been able to really support itself for maybe one year. If it, with the general fund has to transfer it, 10, 15, that's fine. 20 is kind of high, because there is a benefit to that. But when it comes to doing these major repairs, I think there needs to be a little bit more um, fiscal responsibility behind how much repair we do with that pool. Just be, if that pool was five, ten years old, that's a different discussion. But it's not. This pool's what, 60 years old? It's old. 54. 1954. 54. You know, so I don't know what we do with that. I mean, you know, there's a lot of things this city needs before we need a pool. We need a city building. We need mm -hmm. a new We street. screwed that up. You know, there's a lot of things that, that can be done, you know. I, a pool is great to have. It's a community asset. There's a reason why a lot of communities don't have them. Okay. You know, to be honest with you. Um, I can't think of one who doesn't, doesn't want to have a pool. Who does not have a pool? Yeah, I mean, they, Randy, I drive all across the northern part of the state. Every community has yeah. got a pool. Randy's got community. one. Hubert's got one. Tip's got one. Mm -hmm. Well, how, how, how big are they? Jackson Center's got, got, Jackson got one. Jackson Center's got one. How big are they? What do they look like compared to ours? Well, depends. Are they newer? Oh, no, no, I've never stopped to ask <laughs> You know? Um, but, I mean, I'm just saying sure. that the, the premise that nobody has them is, is well, not true. Well, well, I mean, I'm sorry. Maybe some St. Harris and North have. I mean, have I mean Springfield, Springfield brand new. I can tell you that one. Springfield has a splash pad. Yeah. No, they got a pool. They got a pool, too? Yeah. yeah. yeah they got a really nice pool. Yeah, it's 13 to Bechtel. Well, the city of Springfield doesn't have a pool. It's National Parks now that has the, um, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. what's what's the name of the facility? Uh, Splash zone. Yes, right. And then uh, I heard a little bit, you know, we're doing a splash pad because I was up in St. Mary's during the summer and they don't have a pool, but they have a splash pad at their park now. Well, um, well St. Mary's pad. can't have a pool because of the water table. Yeah. And with Solana, <laughs> can't have a pool. Yeah. They got enough ponds around, they don't need a pool. I mean, Smith Park has a splash pad over there. Yeah. Now. Who? Not Smith Park. Is it like Not Smith. Smith. Uh, <laughs> I was like, well, that's a hard park. <laughs> the one there in. Uh, Snyder Park over in, in Springfield, they have a spike pad. Yeah, I have a spike pad put in that thing. I got to tell you, I don't know that that's still open. It may be. Or it was not. last summer if it was open. Yeah, it was. Not, it's not on Snyder. It's on um, Plum. Yeah. It's over by Wittenberg. <laughs> not Park's got it's, a it's, pad. No, Snyder Park has one in it. Mm -hmm. <coughs> huh? got one up loud. Here's my two cents on it. I actually, if you don't mind, I was going to answer a couple of your questions that you brought up about the pool not long ago about why. I don't know where, where's the pool at right now as far as loss for the year. So the 2022 column is pretty up to date since the pool's closed. We had uh, 88,000 in revenue and 154 in expenses, so a loss of 65. 65,000. Mm -hmm. That's that. Now that hasn't closed the, and all of it, but. I think I updated all of the revenue and the expenses up to date. So. so it went from making money to dropping $65,000. Well, it didn't make this year. 
No, not this year. Last year. Last no, last year. Twenty twenty one. I'm sorry. Twenty twenty one had a. That was your revenue. Twenty eight five nine two. Yeah, you had one hundred sixty eight thousand in revenue and a hundred thousand expenses, and then we held forty of it for your full liner. So you had a profit of twenty eight. And you went from the profit of twenty eight to the loss of sixty five. Yeah. Right now, until I close the books, we'll see what where it ends up. It's close. It is still out there. It hasn't lost so, that much okay. money. It hasn't it, lost that much money in almost five years. So we yeah. had no general fund transfer in 2022. Right. We had a general that's fund 40. transfer of 60,000 that's included in the revenue in 21, 46 and 20, 40 and 19. But you ended up with enough revenue that you didn't need the transfer, but we didn't know that until the end of the year. So we had no transfer this year. So that's why your revenue is also less than the previous year's. Okay. revenues here and then this is 2022 we put in 20,000 as an estimate to just balance for mm. estimating 2023 there's 16,000 in maintenance and facilities well yeah and that's yeah that was one of the things I was going to go over with you Bill was some of the things that they did this year was is the uh they got a new uh, point of sale system which was you know mm -hmm. extremely needed in my opinion um you know as far as sales and tracking things, so I think that was like four or five grand. Um, yeah, a little less than that, but yeah, so okay, four, three, yeah. thirty-five, and then I know they put lighting out, um, the new lighting out by the dumpster because it was pitch black out there. Um, then yeah, there was it, the the, uh, the furnace was down most of the season, so yeah, we'll be doing some work on that this this yeah. coming up here. Yeah, repairs or replace that furnace? Yeah. We don't know. Um, we were working with. Uh, Mr. Gent, who obviously mm -hmm. will have to get with someone else now with the boiler, whether it's the sun. Um, but we had a heck of a time towards the end of the year trying to keep it going, and so we still got some diagnostics to, to go. Any estimate on, on cost? Well, I can tell you a brand new one's about 13. At least it was okay. three, four, four years ago. Three, four years, yeah. 13. That boiler's only like five, five years old. Now. Exactly. The last one lasted a whole lot longer. Uh, again, and here's what I'm run we're running into in the water department is the copper quality um, used to be really good. So as copper prices go up, they change the materials that make copper. And that's what we're thinking is that some of the issues is the materials aren't as good as what they used to and, or used to be, and they're failing. What if we insulated that? I mean, if the pool was to stay open a year or two, whatever it is that happens, insulating that building because that furnace is open to the elements more or less year round. The windows, we shut the windows, so it's not it doesn't get rained on or anything. Well, right. I mean, yeah. I don't mean rain actually, but I mean just the temperatures. You know, goes from you know, what, yeah, ninety five to minus. Yeah, typically though, that really doesn't mess with that because the the cover's not rusting. It's got the powder coat. It's it's in great low. Oh yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. It's it's the. I just didn't know if it was hard on the bricks and stuff. Oh, it, they cracked them and he fired up the first time. Okay. I've asked that specific question about fire brick and how they're not a better uh, material. I mean, I'd be hesitant oh, yeah. to spend a whole lot of money on it if, if if you think we're only going to get another year or two out of the pool and have to close it down. Um, but my fill it in or whatever. I mean, I. I wouldn't like to see that happen, but you know, so it, it, we can't run in the red on it like it like it was a few years ago. And, and I, I've told Mike multiple times, I believe. I've told April. I thought she they've done she's done a heck of a job getting it back on track and making money with it. As long as it's making money, I don't have a problem. With it. If it starts losing thirty, forty thousand dollars a year. I'll be on that band bandwagon like I was before to get rid of the pool. And it's not a popular decision, you know, with probably most people on this council, but it's a it's a uh, business decision, you know, is what it boils down to. I mean, if in, in our personal lives, if we had something costing us that much money every year, we'd get, I'd not already got rid of it myself because I just couldn't sustain the cost. But And the city can't sustain it forever either. Um, my thoughts are, and I think I spoke with you a little bit about Randy is, you know, especially with, you know, potential new developments coming into town is, you know, this town doesn't have anything. We've got a handful of parks, you know, Smith Park's great. Other than that, there's not much here. Um, I think the pool would be a great opportunity, you know, and it's an, I, I do think it's an attraction for 
people to come and know that their kids can go to a pool. I mean, I just think it's a nice thing to have. But why don't we, and I know I spoke to you about it, the Kroger Aquatic Center, I don't know the, I don't know the financial details behind it, uh, but you know, I don't know why the why the city can't go after something like that and find out, you know, who would would why somebody wouldn't sponsor the pool, or why can't we go to Park County commissioners who who graciously gave Springfield a million dollars for a parking garage? I mean, can we not talk to these guys, you know, uh, that are you know, and see if they would throw a new Kalil bone and whatnot? I mean, there's never been any hardcore research into getting a new pool as far as that goes, in my opinion. Yeah, we had we had a whole presentation come down. That was just to buy one. I'm that talking about. Build. So you, the no, thing I'm, with sponsorships is that we don't have enough attendance. We had look. We had we had approached. I had approached uh, people to put stuff on the side of the medic. We don't do enough runs. We just don't have that much volume. But it's never been done, so no one knows the answer to that. Well, business is business. They're going to sponsor something, put their money on something that's going to be, you know, Kroger's going to sponsor Huber Heights before they sponsor us any day. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, so as far as going to the commissioners and asking for money. Um, that's that's a different beast. I think you have a better chance of getting money from the commissioners than from a company, non-local company, to support it. But if you're asking Kroger to slap their name on the side of that pool and give us some money, I just don't think you have the volume for it. Nobody knows that. That's your opinion. Also, yeah. Well, I mean, and I'm not being rude. It's just strictly <laughs> your opinion. It's not a fact. That's based off you know experience. Well, you know, so there's that. But but I I think. At the end of the day, the pool does not make money. I understand that. That's not the, the argument. Pool. My argument is is that anytime something is suffering, the administration side of the house finds a way to finance it. But when it comes to the pool, it sits there and it rots away because nobody puts any effort to attempt to find a better way to finance it. <laughs> you may be 110% right that, that Kroger or Johnny Smith's grocery store doesn't want to put their name on the pool. I mean, you may be right. It's never been done. No one's ever contacted the county commissioners. So, I mean, until that's, you know, I just I feel that the ball is always dropped on it. I mean, council is able to go and talk to the commissioners as well. But then we're stepping on your... No, you're not. You as a mayor... We're right trying, if we're trying to get funds for a city official yeah. business, that is that is against what we're allowed to do. That's your guys' job, not ours. Um, you actually can go and advocate for that. Directing is a different different discussion, but there's been many managers and mayors go out and speak to their county kind of commission about getting money. But I will gladly go and talk to commissioners about getting money. But at the end of the day, the pool does not need to have that much money being sucked into it. it I'm is. not disagreeing with that. I mean, I 110% I agree that it is 54 years old and it's, it's reach is limited. I would love to see us find a way to finance a new one. Mike. Yes. With all due respect, I think we're getting away from the reason that we're here. Would it be apropos to put this discussion off about a pool at a later date and go ahead and continue? Um, That's a great idea. The budget. <laughs> Good idea. Let's do that. Anyone else on the pool? Yeah. With, with the new people, uh, builders we have come in, or residents, or whatever, or construction, whatever you want to call it, maybe that will help alleviate, uh, hopefully within five years, you know, some of the water problems, some of the, the as far as uh, in money for those funds, money for the wastewater, maybe money for the, for the uh, pool. Uh, maybe some of those people will come and want to join the pool and, you know, uh, maybe at some point somebody will give us a couple of million dollars to build a pool. It won't be me, I know that. <laughs> right. I'm, I'm with you, Mike. I mean, I think we need to do something. This pool needs to go. Oh, I'm not saying it, it doesn't. But it needs to be replaced. If possible, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I just, I would like to see but all... I don't know what it will cost to do that. And I know... Once upon a time, I was yelling out and high to get rid of the pool because he's giving me the stink eye over there. I'm just staring at you. I mean, we had a presentation come down. Okay. It's just like yeah, there's so many other things that this city needs to operate, like a new city building. We got to expand the fire department. Like there's so many more things that need to be done than building a three or five million dollar pool. Well, and, and or put money into a pool that's right. not going to really 
to be operable in probably five to ten years, just based off the age of the city. I don't think it'll last another ten years. So that's just where I'm at, no. right? And, and I understand that, but, but with all due respect, I wasn't here last year, so I didn't know you had a presentation. <laughs> it was just a presentation. Was a getting in your pool. <laughs> all right, back to you, Miss Harris. Okay, thank you. So we'll move on to cemetery. Cemetery has a portion, small, small portion of um, our superintendent, uh, Greg's salary. We put in just enough for uh, the contractual needs and with the revenue that we have, um, it also is down to the, uh, to a, a very low fund balance. We've got capital maintenance of facilities. Porch roof replacement is in there. And capital. Any questions on cemetery? It's, it's one we have to watch real close again, too. These are the capital expenditures that are in that budget. We know that we, know we can't sell it. It's a mower and a road. <laughs> What, what can we do, because there's a lot of red ink on down through here. Uh, it may be red at the end of the year, it may not be. The, uh, what can we do to change the red ink to black? I mean, what, is there anything possibly we can cut to do that with or not? And I'm talking about all the funds that have red ink in them, you know, for the end of this year and, and the projected for 20 to 23. You know, I mean, we can't we can't run in the red as much as I think we're doing. So the the general fund is is the main one to watch because it's the only one that can help other funds. But right. we can't let that one get so low. So we talked about some things that we might be able to cut, um, and also I I believe that um, the estimated on the revenues will come in a little higher, and we haven't spent. The rest of them, like the cemetery that we're looking at right now, mm -hmm. that also has a general fund transfer in just to get it to stay in the black at the bottom level using fund balance. But again, we can't always use the fund balance. It'll eventually be gone. But cemetery does not have a lot of revenue, and it's not one that we can guarantee what we're bringing in. It goes historically what we've been collecting. That's sale of cemetery and, and the graves. But if you think about it, we don't even have one full-time person expense in cemetery because there's not enough money available. This 15000 is a quarter of one employee, and we have a lot of people that mow and manage it. But because that revenue is kind of like you're talking about the pool, it's a need, it's supported by the general fund, there isn't any way of getting any more revenue. That should change next year, though, correct? If contracting out some of the weed eating and stuff? As far as uh, you know, lightening the load on it, it's not really. Did we talk about that? Well, yeah, but still, you still got to pay Greg out of that a little bit. Mm. Okay. So the contracting is, is, you know, that can come out of your professional services, but Greg's still going to have to open and close Greg. Okay. So right, and I, and it looks mm -hmm. like, I mean, the big, the big hitter for 2023 is mm -hmm. the maintenance of facilities of fifty thousand. Porch repair replacement. We put forty thousand in there. So we can cut capital council that are familiar with that fund balance. And the capital can the <laughs> maintenance of facilities is that what is that replacing something or what are we, what are just we, fixing that's something not, that's not or capital, what is it maintenance of facility is is dedicated uh, for the porch repair Whatever. replacement. Porch repair and it's gonna cost that's fifty grand to replace a porch? <laughs> They got to do. No, it's not your typical porch. It's if you walk up on that corner, um, the whole bottom and foundation has been eroded out of there. So they have to take the whole front roof off, the porch out, re put a uh, footer in, block, and everything and redo it. Of course, you don't know what you have to estimate. And we've got a couple estimates from two contractors. One was 35, and I think the other one. They were ballpark about the same price, so you just don't know. You got to cushion it a little bit when you um, do that. But it's sagging off the house. That's our big problem. It has to be completely rebuilt. Yeah. I'd be comfortable cutting five five grand off of that off the that fifty, and that would bump the ending balance up a little bit. I think. 
the. Uh, <coughs> I don't want to take it out of capital because I don't want to remember CIP. He said a maintenance of facilities. Oh, for what? Bring the 50 oh. down to 45. I mean, I don't know what the rest of the council thinks about it, but. Well, he's talking about the porch, not the group. Yeah, the yeah. porch. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. And we've already, I've already gotten and the three. Porch, you're not going to take the roof off the porch. Is there a roof over the porch? Yes. Yeah. Is that coming down or it's, is that going to be probably it'll, it'll probably be, it may have to be put back up depending on what all they got to do. Okay. It's like anything, that house is, is pretty old too. But that's where all those, all the um, cemetery operations take place. How old is it? Yeah. Just out of curiosity. 50s? I think it's older than that because the old um, cemetery attendant used to live there. Oh, wow. Actually, Greg is allowed to live there if he'd like. He got like a nightcap and a candle. Yeah. You know, <laughs> um, is it worth putting that money into it? We'll be keeping the, the house itself is still structurally sound. If we ever redo anything, we would reside it, uh, redo the inside. What a, um, we've been discussing um, where people can come in and actually sit down and do grave negotiations right now. It's in a living room, and it's not like the living room at Trossel's. It's not like that. <laughs> it is not very appealing, per se, as a grieving person coming in and trying to buy graves. Yeah, if, if council's okay with cutting that by five, I think that would be doable. I think, because you said that it was 30, 35. It's a couple of them coming in. Of course, lumber's been up. Now it's back down, I've mm -hmm. heard. So, yeah. That's yeah. going to have a minimal effect, though. So. Yeah. It would just make that balance a little better, I think. But whatever council wants to do. What do you think, Mr. Well, I got the figures on these from Howie since oh, he's in okay. charge of that. So Mr. Kitko, what do you think? <coughs> I mean, it, it, and I can tell you too, we've already gotten estimates from various uh, cemeteries on prices. We're high on some things, we're low on others. The one thing we got to be careful because as a government, um, when you look through the ORC, we're not allowed to be, uh, um, we're not allowed to gain, now 9,000 is not it, but we're not allowed to go in there and get rich. It's an account you're not allowed to get rich on. You're supposed to charge as a government cemetery the proper amount to do burials. Private companies like on 40, they can do what they want. They're allowed to do that. Um, but we're high on some things, low on some things, so our rates are on par with uh, West Milton Cemetery, the Dayton government, whatever cemetery that Greg gets them all for me. But um, we're obviously lower than private, but we can't we can't charge what private's cost. And that's solely number of people. Oh, and someone asked me, I forgot to bring us up uh, about number of people we bury a year. About 72 is an average. We've had a high of 90. So you can see it's all. How much more room do we have? Um, I think we have uh, we have a five acre piece that is not platted yet, and we have a little bit. Of, we have about an acre left that's platted to finish out. So how many per acre? Ballpark? Yeah. Uh, it's only six by three, mate. We're actually looking in for pricing it of a col col columbarium or whatever. Yes. Oh yeah. Um, to be able to bring the ashes up out of the ground, and then you can or not ash out of the ground, but you can store much more in a smaller footprint. So we've been kind of getting pricing on it and what it would cost to do that to help save space. Well, not only save space, I think that will increase our revenue. I've heard <coughs> it is a very big thing. Uh, Dodds has uh, sent me some um, right. pictures. They do look, I, I wasn't super familiar, but I did see him. He goes, if you promote these, people will pay for uh, more for that than they will just to be sitting under a flat stone. Mm -hmm. Right. So we are looking into what could be a revenue generator on behalf of uh, the, um, uh, what type of uh, service is that, non-burial? Oh, you, you've in got the great in high services on the cremation. Cremation, yeah. We're, the, there, there, there is a tendency uh, to have more cremations now. That They used to be very minimal, now it's about a 50-50. Mm -hmm. And it's supposed to go up according to what I heard. Yeah, Greg's still seeing about that that split, but yeah, they said that that the um, uh, facility could be something that we look at. Not cheap. Uh, there's supposedly there's uh, the guy supposed to get back with me on. You know, you do a loan on it. Certain proceeds of the sale go back to pay the loan off. Any other proceeds go for funding your cemetery operations. Is there any government regulations on that? Since it's a city. Cemetery? For, for what? For the, for the uh, mausoleum 
Thing. No, no, no. They all that stuff is all allowed. Okay. Yeah, you're allowed to do. You guys can do um, as council draft ordinances for not having any decoration. You can do any kind of operational stuff. Um, besides put an ungodly like uh, open and closing price or anything like that but you pretty much we can do just about anything we want with it outside of that that was the council there to make a motion on that i'll make a motion to drop it from 50 to 45. Got uh, fifty thousand to forty-five and maintenance of facilities and cemetery. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> <coughs> All right. We have a first by Councilman Lindsay, a second by Eggleston. Councilman uh, Eggleston, and we'll go down the road here. Councilman Robald. No. Uh, Mayor Lowry. No. Uh, Vice Mayor Grimm. No. Um, Councilman Bond. And, uh, and Councilman Cook. I'm going to vote yes. Um, measure fails four to that, three. You didn't know. You got to call them. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <Yeah>. Councilman uh, <laughs> Lindsay. Yes. Councilman Eggleston. Councilwoman <laughs> Eggleston. <laughs> Motion fails <laughs> four to three. So it stays at 50. Okay. okay. Any other discussion or questions on cemetery? Yeah, and just for the record, I'm not against was it against cutting per se, but if he needs it, it would just be easier to leave it there if the, mm -hmm. if the expenses were higher. I mean, and, and if he doesn't use it, it will just roll over. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. And these are the most that can be spent. Right. We don't yeah. have to spend all. Of it. Yeah, I understand that. <laughs> Yep, okay. you, Waterworks capital improvement. Um, a little bit of the money comes uh, revenue-wise from the um, water to uh, put into this capital improvement fund and the tap-in fees. And expense just, is just saving for capital outlay. So that has, uh, that counts been building so we can save for future needs. May I add on to the water capital? Absolutely. Real quick. This waterworks capital also too, as these developments take off, each home will pay a tap fee, water tap fee and a sewer tap fee. These are the funds where that tap fee goes. So right now water is about eleven, twelve hundred dollars. So if it's a three hundred homes pay that, that's three hundred homes times eleven 1 hundred goes would go into this uh, fund. That's how that works. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions on the wastewater capital improvement? Waterworks capital, yeah, I got that Wastewater capital improvement yes. is nothing. That just has a carryover balance. There's no revenue or expense in that. We have a few funds that are basically could be inactive. Cemetery perpetual care, a portion of the sale of the cemetery lots goes in here along with a portion of our interest that we earn on our bank funds. And then we have a very small expense for flowers and items for Memorial Day. That fund balance is growing. We want to keep it that way. We can maintain it. Any questions on perpetual care? Street lighting. Street lighting assessments is our revenue. And basically we pay for the street lights. That one usually stays about the same. Uh, each year on expenses and revenue and our balance been maintaining. $35,000 in balance. Government Center. We have been putting a transfer in from the general fund of $25,000. This will be the third year approved to hold for government building. And that puts an ending balance of $75,000 towards it. Meaning the new city building. New city building. New government center. That revenue is general fund transfer in. That was something the Councilman Cook had us do a couple years ago. 2021. Mm -hmm. 
there any way we can increase that? If you want to take more out of your general fund, it will reduce that balance. That's where the money comes from. And your ending balance in the general fund right now is 840 with that transfer. But that's where, it, that's the dollar amount that you can decide on. Questions on the government center? We can just hold it for now then. Mm -hmm. And I think we're almost done. Plus with the wastewater equipment. Yeah, wastewater equipment is the other portion of the wastewater tap in fees. And we save it for equipment as needed. We have an ending balance. We haven't uh, spent more than what we've received in, so the ending balance is staying about the same, 11000 I do believe that is it. And our ending totals. I had one. I forgot to go over it at whatever point we should have went over it. was I mentioned it to Mr. Bridge a while back. I know prior to COVID, we had some money in there for some Christmas decorations. And we pulled it because we didn't know what our funds were going to do with COVID and taxes and things of that nature. I don't know how much we had in there, but can we put it back and get something for this year, or is it too late to get anything this year? I don't know where it was at. Where? I can't remember where we put it. Um, we'd have to amend the capital, which is, I guess we can do that because it would be new purchases. Right. Um, so anything over 5000 for one purchase would have to be capitalized. Um, or would you prefer just um, wait and do it on this budget for next year? I don't. We don't have any money for 2022. Okay. Yeah. So, so it would have to be for 20. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like you know, so any kind of new lighting on for for mm -hmm. Christmas. Plans and buildings. General. I like that. Okay. I think it's. I think it's. Yeah. You played Christmas music last year, didn't you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Derek did some things with the light poles and stuff like that. Um, the city building looked good at Christmas. It did. It's going to look good yeah. this year too. Yeah. He he got a lot. Yeah. his community development sure. fund mm -hmm. and decorated that. That was nice. <coughs> I'm, like, you, I'm sorry. Uh, those uh, decorations tend to be super expensive. They are. So I've been sharing some uh, uh, booklets with the mayor over the course of the years, but I mean, I don't know, it's something that we do like X amount of dollars every year because like I said, one thing can be super expensive. Like four or five grand yeah. for one piece. They, it, they can't get up. For commercial grade. Pieces, for sure. Um, but who doesn't like to decorate for Halloween? I mean, for Christmas. <laughs> um, but whatever dollar amount you guys in, it's going to come out of your general fund. Do you remember what we had? I thought it was like 15 or 20, wasn't it? I thought it was 20 15. sounds more appropriate, to be honest with you. I don't think council would have done anything over that. Okay. I'm trying to think. Mm -hmm. I think more things we can bring to downtown. You know, so we where are we taking that? Out of so that I can the CRP. Um, lands and buildings. Uh, I don't think Farmers Market will. Well, they did a Christmas in July, but Marshall will do his his Christmas parade. Whatever. What are you guys thinking as far as the decoration, like stuff just for the light poles, or? Yeah, I mean, because I mean, you know, I don't know if I lights in the trees down there, like I know Tipsy does, but that's a lot of man hours. We don't have the most of them. Con like they uh, Springfield contracts half of their tree decorating. Really? Lights? Oh yeah, city employees don't do all that. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, they get an electrical company to come in. Now, whether do they donate some, I don't know, but... I'm not a big fan of the lights around the screen, the poles, because for a life, I'm not. I've never had them. Yeah. Really. <laughs> I don't know how you alleviate that. I mean, funny that we're talking about this, because I was thinking about doing some lights in the tree, but then I don't know. We don't have any ground. Yeah, we don't have to plug into the pole. Right. There's That's no ground electricity. No. Which I think would be nice to have the trees done if those are the poles. Um, but the rope lights are this. They're... The road lights. <laughs> so, I mean, they age quick outside. Yeah. So, they don't look good like maybe the day you put them on. Um, and I've already, I told Mr. Bridge I'd be looking at some Christmas decorations. I have pulled various ones up. Uh, keep in mind, if you guys do come across some that maybe, and I can share, uh, we can't go from the pole inward towards the road. We have to have um, two foot six inch of clearance from the face of the curb back to the pole. So, everything we mount has to mount on the back side of the pole. I know some people, uh, cities, they got their poles far enough back that they could mount it on the front. So anything can go on, around, 
but just can't like protrude out into the state highway. Well, didn't we in the past, of course, that's when we had the old poles up there. We put them on the front side. Yeah, on the old telephone poles when they used right. to be there. Yep, they were up, put up over uh, thirteen six. Can we get these archways that go over Main Street? It's like <laughs> 90,000? That's a, that's a drop. Yeah, we'll look. <laughs> no, we'll look at something. Um, so 20 G's in Lansing Building? Yeah. Okay. So we don't need a motion yeah. to do that? It's in capital. No, you guys don't need a motion. You have huh. to amend your capital? Yeah, I'm going to have to. I don't know where I'm going to amend So be over the, will they be so over the 5,000? Anything over 5,000 we need to be. But I don't know. I don't know. I'll look. Okay. If I don't have to, you won't fully admit. If each is a thousand, then you might be okay. Well, it depends on the rate of the so forth. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm just saying, how do you, what do you use the light on it? The aluminum snowflake. We can big. put it under yeah, maintenance of facilities, yeah. land and building. I'll look at that. Yeah, we'll look. I'll look okay. at the definitions. So um, basically, it's going to go in lands and buildings. We just don't know whether it's going to go capital or just a general line on it for lands and buildings. So let me write it up real quick. So, Mr. Uh, Mayor, 20,000 is your motion? Yeah, I guess, yes. Second. Hold on. So 20,000 in lands and buildings for Christmas decorations. Okay, so we have a first by Mayor Lowry and a second by uh, Councilwoman Eggleston. We'll go down the line. Councilman Lindsay? No. Councilman Roadwald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? I'm not trying to be the Grinch, but <laughs> no. <laughs> bah humbug. Bah humbug. And Councilman Cook? I'm going to be the second Grinch, no. Okay. I'm so the third one, though, Mr. Cook. <laughs> Motion you passes. Pe Peggy. Oh, yeah, you the second time. <laughs> Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Lowry? You already got me. I'm going to have to redo it again, don't I? Huh? I still have to call your vote again. That's what I didn't do last time. And they got rid of it. What? You already called mine. You, you were the first. Right? Was no, actually, yes. I was the first. Say yes. Yes. Okay. I thought you called me. I'm sorry. No, you're good. Motion passes 4 to 3. I like the lot of these left. Trash. Yeah. <laughs> new new one. <laughs> Our luck is going to, they're going to take him out of truck. That's a nice to take him out. Yeah. All right. That is it. Okay, so before we turn, crash on him. Councilman Bond, I went through our talk and I slashed that general fund down to bare bones. So what that means is taking the planning out, taking off all the money we saved for the city building, taking off the transfer to the pools, all that, uh, going down through each line item and something that was maybe 5000 knocked it down to four. Um, that still puts us in the red at two hundred ninety thousand eight hundred twenty-seven dollars, and that's slashing it down to bare bones. But we're not doing that. You were just which fund? Showing just you just seeing where yeah. that would. Be. Yeah. Which fund? The general fund. Oh, okay. Is that of the six sixty whatever? Oh, okay. There, I got it down to two ninety, but that's taking away your code enforcement, your planning department. I mean, it, it takes away a lot. It takes it down to bare bare bones. The other and is still, but again, that is we don't know how this year's going to end up. Oh, we can take fireworks out. That's taking fireworks out, taking your park direct board out. It literally takes it down the barrel. Take council it's out. Getting it down the <laughs> I didn't think you got to do that. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Hey, have you, have you started the search for the planning director? <laughs> not yet. <laughs> you know, like that's the first year? Probably not, to be honest with you. Um, we'll see if we get. I'm curious <clears throat> what the. Um, Applicable would look like. Um, a lot of cities can't find good help right now. So, yeah, curious to see how that comes out. Hopefully, we can take another planner. We need a planner that knows um, developments. Um, so, um, we got a lot of growth coming up to this. But yes, I plan on putting it out. Uh, I don't know where we're going to get. You want to block? You can do it. <coughs> I'm still looking for a it's water a operator. <laughs> Sorry, no offense. <laughs> and that's actual work. That don't work. If any of you guys know anyone with a uh, CDL, 
and is looking for to maybe work in the water I got my water job. I'm taking applications until October 31st. I'm almost done, and you can't. it's you not looking great. Right. What is? I'm sorry. Alex. The water operator position. Mm -hmm. The big thing is the CDL, um, but just having some experience. We're willing to train now, where we maybe used to get an employee. And what's so what's just, the salary? On this? Um, the, I think the hourly is somewhere between twenty and twenty-two. For the operator or for the CDL driver? For the operator. Oh, wow. They have to. Everybody has to have a CDL. Oh, okay. Did you lose somebody? Uh, he resigned and went to another community. Yeah. Who's that? Yeah. All right, yeah. So do we want to second? Yeah, that was got a motion to adjourn by Ms. Eggleston, second by Mr. Lindsay. Oh. Councilman uh, Roadwald. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Uh, Councilman Eggleston. Councilwoman yes. Eggleston. Yes. And Councilman. Yes. Mayor You're adjourned.